Hi everyone, I'm Greta with Chattahoochee Valley Library's Children's Department. Summer has definitely arrived here in Georgia. It is hot and it is humid. So I hope you get to go outside and enjoy some water play this summer. Splash around, cool off, and today I'm going to show you a fun experiment you can add to your water play time. This experiment will be good for the whole family and I'll show you how to design a scavenger hunt to add a game to your science experiment time. Now it looks like we're probably going to get some afternoon thunderstorms, a common thing here in Georgia in the summer. So I'm going to set up this science experiment underneath my patio. Let's get started. Okay, I've about got things set up for us here now. I have a tub of water and some balls as you can see. But before I get started on my experiment, I want to remind you about a process that scientists use when they're conducting experiments. It's called the scientific method. Now here's a real simple version of it. When scientists are having an experiment, it starts with asking a question. If you see something and you're wondering why it is the way it is, you're your first step on being a scientist. Then you gather information, and you can do that by seeing, touching, hearing, smelling, asking somebody else, an expert, reading books about it. Then you form a hypothesis. A hypo hypothesis is just a really fancy word for saying you make an educated guess. You guess about what's going to happen when you're asking your question. Then the experiment part is when you test your hypothesis. That's what I have set up here. And then we're going to share our results. So when you're doing water play and you want to take a break in the shade, fill up any container that you can find with some water, and we're going to do an experiment on sink and float. So, just to get us thinking, I gathered a bunch of balls here. There's a tennis ball. This is like a ping pong ball. This is a golf ball. And this is the same size as these other ones, but it has holes in it. So my question is, which one's going to sink and which one's going to float? If you were here, I'd ask you to make your predictions. Since you're not here, we'll just have to go with my predictions. I'm going to start with this one. I think it will float. It's got holes in it. Let's see. Ready? Yeah. You see, it's staying on the top of the water. So that one, my prediction was right. Well, now this golf ball is the same size as that one, but it's solid. And it's a little bit heavier. I think I'm going to predict that this one will float too, though, because it's really not that big. I think it'll float. Whoop. My prediction was wrong. I learned that time the golf ball sinks. I guess if it's heavy, it sinks. Or maybe just because it's solid, it sinks. Now this is a solid ball, but it's lightweight. Do you think it would sink or float? What's your prediction? We're going to test it out now. I'm not going to tell you what I think. Let's see if it does what you predicted. Wow, I don't know if you can see it, but it floats completely on top of the water. The other one is staying buoyant. Just a little bit of it is on top. So those three balls were the same size. Now I've got my bigger tennis ball. Well, my prediction is this golf ball sank. This big old tennis ball is going to sink. It's twice as big as that golf ball. What's your prediction? Sink or float? Let's try it. <laughs> Wrong again. That tennis ball floated. So I just conducted my experiment with these items to see what would sink and what would float. Some of my predictions were right and some of my predictions were wrong. I'm going to use that information to do some more experiments with some other kinds of round objects. I have a grape, a lemon, an orange, a cantaloupe, and a watermelon. 
They're all fruits. They're all sort of round. I want you to think about your prediction or your hypothesis about what will float and what will sink. Then we can just sort them onto these towels. I've labeled one towel sink and one towel float. Okay, here's my hypothesis, my prediction. The grape and the lemon will float. But I believe that the watermelon and the cantaloupe and the orange will sink. I can also write down a prediction on a table like this. You can write the word, you could draw the picture. I wrote the letter F if I think it's going to float, and I wrote the letter S if I think it's going to sink. Those are my predictions. You can see here in this column, after we do our experiment, we'll write down what happens, and that will be our results. And now it's time for us to test our hypothesis. We made our predictions about sink or float using those towels. I brought over here the first two pieces, the little bitty grape and the bigger lemon. And I have my table here so I can record my results when I see what happens. My prediction for each of these is that they float. So let's see if my predictions are correct. Here goes the grape. It did not float. Did you see that? Went straight to the bottom. So I have to record on my results here that S for sink. That's what happened in my experiment. The lemon's bigger. My first prediction was that it was going to float. I'm reconsidering that now because the grape, it sank. But I'll stick with my original prediction. Let's see. Is it going to sink or float? Did you see that? It bounced against the bottom, but now it's up and it's buoyant. It's floating. So that prediction was right. I'm so glad I didn't change it. But I don't understand why something so little sank and something so bigger floated. Hmm. I have to record my results. F for float. All right, let's go get the other fruits. So let's see. My predictions are that the orange was going to sink. So let's test my hypothesis. Here we go. <gasps> see that? It's buoyant. So the orange did not sink. It floats. I'm going to have to record that on my table over here. F for float. Let's try the next bigger one, the cantaloupe. This is pretty heavy. It'll taste really good after I'm done with my science experiment, too. Now, my prediction is this is going to sink. It is much heavier than that orange. Let's see if my prediction was correct. A cantaloupe floats, too. So I need to write F next to my cantaloupe results, F for float, and I thought it was going to sink. All right, the last one's a big one. Oh, a watermelon. It's so big, I think I better take these other fruits out. Here goes the watermelon. My prediction was it was going to sink. What's your prediction? Let's test our hypothesis. Sink or float? It's floating, even though it was so heavy. The whole thing's not on top of the water, but like the others, it's buoyant, and it's bobbing there at the top of the water. So now I can look at my results and try some more experiments with some other things. There's a fun way to figure out how to gather the things you want to use for your experiment, and I'm going to teach you how to make a scavenger hunt so that you and your family can have a game right before you do your experiment. A 
scavenger hunt is when you have to go find things. And we can create a game that'll be perfect for the ages and stages of the people in your family. You can make it as easy or as hard as you want to do. There's a few ways you can do it with things you just have around the home. I happen to have a game with these two dice, so they're perfect. I can roll the dice, and it came up with four purple. So everybody's got to run find four purple things. I can make my own dice with a cubed box. You could put colors on it. You can put shapes on it. Um, you could put rooms. You have to find something from the kitchen. You have to find something from the garage. Always ask your grown-up if you're going to be able to use those things in the water for our experiment. You can also just get any bag or box, put colored crayons in it or colored pencils, and you have to stick your hand in the bag, and whatever you pull out, that's what you have to go scavenger hunt for. Something yellow. Make it even harder by rolling a regular dice. And you got to find five yellow things. That's what I'm going to do for this scavenger hunt. i got to go find five yellow things in my house that I can use in my next experiment. Finding yellow things was a bit of a challenge, but here's what I found. A kitchen gadget for juicing lemons, a dog toy, a toy spider, some Legos, and some yellow clay. Now I've got to sort them into my sink and float, and then I'll conduct my experiment. Why don't you create a scavenger hunt at your house and see what things you can find and conduct your own experiments on sinking and floating? Then let us know what it is you've discovered. I'll share some resources for you to learn about the science behind sink and float next. Here's a link to a fun YouTube video that explains the science of density and why things sink and float in a clear way. It's perfect for adults like me that need a refresher on the topic, and kids can learn a lot from this too. Of course, Chattahoochee Valley Libraries has lots of great resources, and Hoopla is just one of them. I found these three books that offered more ideas for experiments and explained things clearly, and good old Miss Frizzle and the Magic School Bus Kids explore the science in an episode called Ups and Downs that you can check out. Remember, talk, sing, read, write, and play with your child every day. That's how kids are going to build the skills and knowledge that they need to thrive, and it's great fun for the whole family. See you next time. Inspiration. Mysterious. Reading is an adventure. My escape. Refreshing. Like a glass of water. Ah, relaxing. Bizarre. A warm hug. Awesome. Opportunity. Fundamental. Transformative. Reading is unforgettable. The Summer Reading Challenge. We're open. Check us out.